Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. This week, Casey shows us how Vitor Belfort and Joseph Benavides could have bettered their chances at UFC 152. And we'll look at the big EFC Africa 16 card on October 19th. Huge show. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, the award-nominated host, Casey Oxen9. Huh? The Emmys were last week. They, they were, yes. And Jennifer was watching a Lifetime movie. Therefore, I was forced to have to kind of switch back and mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. Uh, I missed our spot on there. What did we take, like four or five of them? Uh, we, didn't, we didn't win this year. How many uh, were we nominated for? Well, we we weren't nominated either. We were actually snubbed once again. That's wait, that's the daytime Emmys I'm thinking of. Well, no, yeah, we're taking out Susan Lucci, yeah. One Life to Live, all those guiding yes. light. Watch out. Casey, enough with the shenanigans. Let's get to the MMA news flurry of code. We're starting with a boxing story. Well, a boxing story involving a former MMA fighter, so I guess it counts here. Boxing has a lot of events coming up, but maybe none more interesting than the confirmed fight between Roy Jones Jr. and street fighting legend Kimbo Slice. Now, it's set for December in Jamaica. It probably won't be taken seriously by boxing enthusiasts, but outside of, you know, maybe a Pacquiao and a Mayweather, maybe a Klitschko fight, for the casual fan, this is one of the biggest fights to happen in a while. The websites are slamming it. They say yeah. there's no place for this fight in the sport uh, but you really you take it into perspective it could be interesting because sure. you, you've got Kimbo who of course has the street fighting roots and the uh, the the UFC time so MMA crossover here and then you've got Roy Jones Jr. who is possibly the greatest pound per pound fighter of all time of course he's not looked very good in his last 14 outings he's seven and seven mm -hmm. so but when you take and you put these two together at these particular spots in their career mm -hmm. it could be interesting I so, think so too. I, I don't think it's pay-per-view worthy but something to take a look at i drop a little bit of money on it maybe 10 15 bucks ufc and private also owner of jungle fight valid ishmael made a proclamation last week that jose pele landy johns is the best fighter never to win a title now of course we know pele landy is going to be fighting november 2nd at abu dhabi warriors against Evgeny matinko talk about the brazilian legend here casey you think this is a, a valid proclamation there by valid ishmael I completely concur with that. Pele Landy, it was one of my first favorite fighters. Yeah. I watched him back in the 90s in those IVC tapes, uh, the, the true no holes barred. And he stood out even beyond Anderson Silva and Vandele Silva as the epitome of shoot box back yeah. then. And uh, then, of course, he went on and, and fought in Rome, Georgia against Pat Militich in 2000 at that World Extreme Fighting Aid event. I actually, that, that was my first show that I ever attended. And when I got there, that was the main event. And, and I got to see uh, Chuck Liddell for the first time and, wow. and Tito Ortiz and all those guys but the guy that really stood out was Pele because I had watched so much of him he was so aggressive and truly the epitome of no holes barred fighting so yes I think that he he certainly uh, deserves that moniker I cannot wait to see Abu Dhabi Warriors November 2nd I'm going to be there announcing it and I just can't wait to be in attendance to see Pele Landy WFCTV.com you can watch the whole event free online finally let's look at last weekend's big event UFC 152 a lot of fireworks on the undercard Casey some highlights of course Cub Swanson with a big KO on Charles Oliveira, Matt Hamill with the victory in his comeback fight, and of course Michael Bisping with a pretty solid decision over Brian Stan. Co-main and main, first the flyweight title match, the first ever flyweight title match. It was Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse, becoming the first UFC flyweight champion. A lot of booing in this fight, though, and that's kind of what the storyline was. I think that's completely lame, and, and you listen to Dana White's comment, he said that if you didn't like this fight as a fan, then don't bother to ever buy another show. He doesn't yeah. want you to buy another show because it was a great fight. And you're talking about two guys that, that in the first three rounds could hardly even get their hands on each other because of their speed and their athleticism. Mm -hmm. It's not because they were being lazy. You can look uh, at Benavides' face after the fight and tell he was really a in lot a of damage, yeah. Four and five, it, the, you know, the action actually slowed down enough to where they, they were interacting like fresh welterweights. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It is absolutely amazing. So for some, anybody to boo that fight, to me, I thought it eclipsed every fight on the card, including the main event. Wow, speaking of the main event, nobody really expected the 35-year-old Vitor Belfort to last long with the current phenom of the UFC, John Bones Jones. We couldn't be more wrong as Vitor did hang around, had some great exchanges, put his hands on him, and just about got the armbar victory in the first round. Now, Jones would go to win by Americana in the fourth round, but he really showed a lot of grit in this fight, Casey. Well, he did. And, and Vitor Belfort, he, he slapped on that armbar, and I thought it was there. I've had that sort of injury before where I had the armbar on, I didn't quite tap to it, I could hear it cracking like celery, Oof. but you don't really feel it so much, so you're there in the the heat of the battle so you gut your way through it and then when you cool off three or four hours later you feel it and you feel it for the next two months because that's why the recovery on something like that is so huge testament to john jones tenacity and his push but also to Vitor belfort to hang in there man he's an old school legend he went out there to fight and of course
course, he didn't get get the victory. Um, but you know, it, it, it was a very valiant effort, and, and valiant effort by John Jones. Uh, uh, you know, big props to him for landing that Americana on a BJJ black belt of the man magnitude of Vitor Belfort. That was impressive. Last week, you know, we had a number of one punch knockouts in our clip of the week contest. But of course, it's up to the fans to decide who wins the prize pack. This week it was close, but there can only be one winner, and that winner is. Let's get that drum roll. Keto Andrews from West Coast Fighting Championships with a big slam and tap out victory. It's westcoastfighting.com for more information. Great show there. Now, this week, the prize pack is amped up. Once again, Casey, let them know what they can win this well, week. Well, you've got the Elevation Training Mass 2.0, the Shaker Cup and Pre-Workout Formula from Gamma Labs, and apparel from Banff Fight Gear, Hunter MMA, and Versahi. Well, Casey's going to school you on some cage science from UFC 152 in the next round, but let's get to our first four finalists for Clip of the Week. Yeah, this is some serious heart though from Clinton Childers. Oh, is he is he still he's out. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and clicking Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. The most spectacular event is coming to Abu Dhabi. Be part of the premier fight sport event in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi Warriors. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome back. Now, UFC 152 had two exciting fights in the co-main and the main event. Vitor Belfort and Joseph Benavidez were on the losing end, but Casey's going to take us to the mats to show you how they could have changed their outcomes. All right, I'm here with Tyler Maley mitten and we're going over a little bit of the cage science from the Benavidez and Johnson fight from last weekend's UFC, and it went like this. Benavidez looking good in the fight, but really what made the difference were the takedowns. And early in the fight, you saw Benavidez pushing for the takedowns. The hips of Johnson so good. So so this is a tactic that possibly could have helped him secure these takedowns and thus score and take those rounds. And it goes like this, you've got to use the cage to block off the hips and block the sprawl. Whenever a guy is sprawling and smashing you down, if you use this, it makes it very, very difficult for him to sprawl. And if you watch, my feet are back. Okay, typically speaking, when you work an underhook clinch uh, from out in the center, you're going to keep your leg inside and that's to prevent the lateral, but in this case, the cage prevents the lateral. You don't have to worry about that. So I can drop all of my weight in. Now, I don't want to be over. I want to be arched and upright like this. I'm going to use my shoulder to press. You see how I draw him up onto his toes. Okay, that's going to help me use this lift. And I'm not going to use my back. I'm actually going to use the cage to help me make this lift on a guy that's about 35 pounds heavier than I am. So watch, I lift him up. I'm going to scoop under. I'm going to grab my gable grip. And watch, I'm going to bring my left knee around and I'm going to drive him through the cage and lift him up. Okay? Now, when you're looking at this, you gotta think, it's all cage, it's not back. And this is a good example of this. Look, I'm holding him in, there's no way my back is gonna be strong enough to lift in segments. But if you look, I'm holding him here, it's no muscle, I'm just holding him here on my shoulder. And that's what's gonna help 
to make these takedowns work. And really, even if Benavides could have gotten him down and secured just for a moment, it could have made the difference in the first three rounds, which possibly could have taken the fight for him. However, when we're talking about the John Jones and Vitor Belfort finish, we're talking about the Iron Cross, okay, which starts here, which of course neutralizes my ability to defend with my right hand or to escape. It blocks me down. And it also leaves me open for the strikes. It leaves me open for this Americana, which ultimately ended the fight that night. So this is what we gotta look at. How do we defend the Iron Cross? Well, we can't give up the Americana and the Iron Cross or the, otherwise the fight's over. We gotta make sure that one is in tight. So look, when I get taken down and I'm here on my back, he goes after the Iron Cross, I gotta make sure that this arm is in tight. I'm gonna say the Pledge of Allegiance right here. My hands across my heart. I've got to make sure I'm right there. And look, I'm going to use my left foot. I'm going to post it and I'm going to use a shrimp. As I make that shrimp, look, I'm going to drive my forearm across here. I'm going to keep my head in low to minimize the amount of damage that I'm taking. And look, I'm going to drive this arm in. If I can make enough space, I'm going to instantly try to go to the single. If I can go to the single, maybe I can go to the back. Okay, and that would be my escape. Now, of course, the Americana. If I can defend, if I can avoid this, but he goes after the Americana alone, well, the same thing. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to post this foot. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to grab right here at his pinky knuckle. I'm going to walk in and come up. I'm going to hold on, and I'm going to try to do the same thing. Okay? Now, this is something that I think that Peter Belfort understood completely, but this is the, the situation. When you are fatigued and there is damage that has been applied over three to four rounds of fighting, that is when it is crucial that you, you act on these quick. I, I fully believe that, that uh, the Vitor Belfort understands these move sets, but unfortunately for him, he was unable to enact them. Thus, John Jones retains the title, and that's cage science. Tell you what, Casey, a little cage science is good for everyone, and so is some EFC Africa. Right. Full preview of EFC Africa 16 and a special EFC Africa main event of the week after your next four finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs> Start hurting, even though these are big guys. Those don't. A little extra padding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh! Big overhand right, and he is stuck. Oh, wow, wow, wow. There we go. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAInsideTheCageTV.com and clicking Get On Air. Coming soon, a mixed martial arts spectacle, the like of which the Middle East has never seen. The Abu Dhabi Warriors are coming. There will be knockouts, submissions, and more bone crushing than you can handle. Buckle up, funsters. Don't blink. Abu Dhabi Warriors 1 comes to you live from the Adnec Exhibition Center on November 2nd at 7 p.m. local time. Be there. I think for my son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, I believe him. No, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. And it's third round action, time to impress those judges once again. One thing you can count on every couple months is that EFC Africa is putting on another great event in South Africa. Now that they are hooked up with our home at Fight Now TV, that means even more EFC for the U.S. audience. Casey, it's great. I love the EFC. I always sing the praises whenever we see a new show come out. They always astound me. These guys are very, very exciting. All the fighters, uh, all the competition is good. They do bring a little bit of outside um, uh, talent in 
and for the most part, it's these South African guys, and these guys are really growing everything from the grassroots up, and it's excellent. Hey, there's a reason why the UFC is trying to head down there as we speak. Well, this event looks pretty impressive on paper. Obviously, three big title fights on this one, but even on the undercard, some great heavyweight action, which everybody loves to see. Andrew Van Zyl taking on Ian Visser, and Ricky Michelle is taking on Tiny Strauss, who is certainly not tiny. Well, of course, Van Zyl, this guy is always in the title hunt. Very, very tough competitor there for EFC. And then Tiny, that, that's a that that is a, a monster a, a, of a man yeah a huge a guy and we're going to see him in in the heavyweight division very very uh popular fan favorite down there he's looking to get his first win we're going to see what happens there and then of course you look at these three title fights a triple main event if you will it'll be 145 champ demarte pena defending against terrence greasel who had to step in for the injured wenzel now though that wenzel now fight was going to be huge mm -hmm. greasel is definitely going to have his work cut out for him dealing with demarte pena pena is incredible he's four and oh he is the champion and this is a guy who, who just choked out hockey yeah. in his last outing. So, it, it, you know, huge things for this guy. He is on a roll, and I think he's going to continue that role with this fight. I think so, too. For the welterweight strap, it's champion Jadison Costa making his first title defense against a man on a huge winning streak, a big fan favorite. He's the welterweight dark horse, Mikhail Operman. This is going to be a fight for the ages. What can I say about Operman? This is a guy that's on an eight-fight winning streak, uh, undefeated in the EFC, and is really, really making a push for this belt. But, you know, Costa, he's not going to go down easy. Of course, after defeating uh, Dallas Jacoby, mm -hmm. he set himself as the EFC anti-hero. And it really, it, it, you, you saw the, the crowd voice their disapproval for this guy, but it makes it all so much sweeter when you see this guy step into the cage. I think it's going to be great. And then finally, how about the main event? A heavyweight showdown. Title on the line as Ruan Fangs Potts will be defending his title against a monster of a man, Bernardo McKixie. He's called the Black Panther. He's been on a tear, but is he champion caliber that's well, the question this guy is on a two-fight winning streak it's his turn now he did lose to Wessels and Van Zeele, mm -hmm. okay in, in the past uh, two guys that that uh, uh, Ruan Potts is disposed of uh, pr pretty uh, handily mm -hmm. but it just still yet yeah, it's this guy's turn McKixie is a very very tough guy and I think it's gonna be a great fight oh, I think the fans are gonna love that one I cannot wait for this event to go down it's Friday October 19th and yes you can watch it on fight now TV here in the US for more information go check Check out EFCAfrica.com and FightNow.com on how to watch. Our main event comes from EFC Africa. It's one of Mikhail Operman's greatest hits, and it's our MMA Inside the Cage main event of the week. Oh, you ready? Cut the tension there with a knife, man. Here we go. And starting in the blue trunks, Opperman in the black. This is going to be ferocious stuff. Martin immediately oh, pushing, uh, pushing Mikhail back. Mikhail working at knee. Mikhail's very, very comfortable in the clinch as well. Double underhooks on Mikhil. Nice knee landing in the clinch. Nice knee landed to the body of Martin. Another knee finds big the ribs. Knee. Another big knee by Mikhil. This time Martin puts him down. Oh, tried to. Tried to and he let go of it. Mikhil's got a big guillotine choke. And Martin picks him up, slams him down, tries to move to the side. Looks like his colors coming back. That was very, very tight for a second. Michiel's now got half guard. Martin gets his head out. Lands a shot. Alpherman loves the ground. This is already trying to set up for that triangle. That right leg is already very, very high up. Martin now tries to stack Michiel. Lands a shot to the body. Martin's now got both of his hooks in. It's been a fascinating fight. Okay, two highly Martin skilled landing, athletes. Landing some shots, landing some shots. He's on Michiel's back. Though. This is a dangerous, dangerous spot for Michiel to be in. Still doing well, gets out, he wants to spin around and fall into Finstaden's guard. The cheeky right hand finds its way through the defense of Finstaden. Finstaden still got his back. Mikhil doing very, very well, nearly back to his feet here. Finstaden landing a shot, and again, he's going straight for a takedown. Oh, good Puts power. Mikhil down again. Mikhil on his back, very dangerous. Now he's got full guard from here, he can fire up submissions, but so far Finstaden has done incredibly well to avoid anything serious. Down and land one of those big fists of his. We've always said Martin van Sodden really does ground and pound like an angry child. Moves over to side control now, tries to get mount, got knee on the belly. Oh my nice goodness. Big elbow landed by Van Sodden. Mikhil nearly got over the top there. Got onto his back. Puts in a guillotine chuck. That is oh, very, 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 very deep. This is trouble. That's Fansodden. very, very deep. He is scratching it. picks him up again.
the referee, Arnu Pinar, stops this bout. Four minutes and 18 seconds into round number one. To the winner, by tap out due to a guillotine, Machil Hoberman. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Well, it's almost time to close this episode out, but before we do, it's your last four finalists for Clip of the Week. Oh, nice. it up. It up. Well, let's go, Lansing. Who do you like? Makes a very dirty dozen of clips. Let's check them all out in order, one through 12. This is some serious heart, though, from Clint Childers. Oh, is he, is he still, he's out. Oh, yeah. Oh! Big overhand right, and he is stuck. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Come on, come on. Let's go, Lansing. Who do you like? Inside the cage tv.com and cast your vote for clip of the week. Remember, the winner takes home a huge prize pack from Elevation Training Mask, Gamma Labs, Bamp Five Gear Hunter MMA, and Versahi. Wow. Find us on Facebook, follow us at MMA ITC on Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube for exclusive video. I'm Cyrus Fees. I'm Casey Oxendine. We'll see you next week inside, inside the cage. cage.